Welcome to this episode of the Medical Affairs Professional Society podcast series, Elevate. Opinions are those of the speakers and don't represent the views of their organizations. I'm your host, Garth Sundam, Communications Director at MAPS, and today we'll be speaking with Carol Collins Caravo, Senior Director of Medical Sciences at Gilead Sciences, Jennifer Schneider, Director of Field Medical Alignment at Novo Nordisk, and Abby Frazier, VP of Marketing at Larval, about how to tell the difference between insights and observations in medical affairs. This podcast is made possible by Larval, which has been accelerating decision-making since 2004 by providing real-time customized competitive intelligence software with data-driven analytics to the pharmaceutical, biotech, and healthcare industries. Carol, Jennifer, Abby, welcome. Uh, we're talking about insights today. So let's start with how insights generally are gathered and used in most organizations now. And uh, Carol, maybe do you want to get us started? Sure. Okay. Thank you, Gar. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. So, you know, I think how insights are collected and used has really evolved over the past couple of years. You know, I think initially, at least when I came into industry, and I've been in the industry for, I hate to say, over 20 years now, you know, it was a lot of tax. And it was, you know, check in the box. Did you see 40 people this week? And, and you really didn't bring back anything that you were learning in the field. And I think that's really started to shift as we view medical fairs as a key driver of not just medical strategy, but strategy across the company. We can shape strategy for clinical development as well as commercial. And so... Now that we're trying to bring insights in from the field and their interactions with healthcare providers through advisory boards, through interactions with investigators, at least for our organization, it's been rather clunky. You know, the medical scientist team would send me their insights in a Word document or an email, and then I spend hours going through that and picking out what matters, what doesn't, oh, rewriting, and then sending it out to the organization for review. So we're trying to shift into a, a much more um, focused way of capturing insights. Um, but I'll turn it over and let Jen add there some expert. Jennifer, yeah, thank you. insights used in your organization now? Yeah, so um, we utilize our insights to help like advance our business. So they help divide, define our medical and company strategies, priorities, and plans. Um, so we d use those in the planning process. Um, we also identify stakeholder needs, preferences, and then some gaps in care to see if there's anything that we need to expand on. Um, it also helps inform our real world um, experiences and treatment pathways that we are developing. And then it can help in our clinical trial program. So we kind of look at insights, like they can come in from uh, a multitude of different ways. Um, the way that our the field medical team collects insights is through a program we utilize Viva. And so all of those insights go into Viva. We're actually now utilizing XFly to help with that analysis um, problem that Carol speak, spoke of earlier. Um, so we are, it's, a, you know, it's a little um, platform inside of Viva, which is our CRM management. Uh, and, and they enter the in, insights into XFly. So we do extensive training on what to enter in there. And these can be insights related to guidelines that pro, um, providers are using clinical trial insights. So if they have any um, insight into what's going well or what um, kind of hiccups they're having in clinical trials. We also get insights in competitive intelligence, um, treatment approaches. So what pathways are our providers using for different, um, uh, different chronic diseases? What diagnostic, diagnostic tools are being utilized? Um, again, any unmet gaps or needs, um, and then decision, what's influencing their decisions, um, pathways that they're using, and then any real world data that they're using to, um, to make decisions. And I think the biggest thing about the difference between like an insight and an observation, like we talked about, is an insight is really like what the information is, and then why. 
the why. We have to understand like why the provider is saying that in order to really have that full insight. So for example, if someone said, you know, product X is great, or, you know, this clinical trial is not helpful, then that, 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 that's an observation. So we need to understand why the provider is saying that, because that's what's going to help um, shape our, you know, p- the planning that we do as an organization. Oh, that's interesting. Well, let me just follow up really quickly on some of the mechanics that you described at first. Is it that the organization defines the buckets that insights will go into? So you said like this might be an insight about clinical trials. This might be an insight about KOL preference. This might be an insight. Is it that the organization designs the buckets and then as insights come in, you you put them into the correct bucket? That's a great question. So when I was um, kind of spewing off the different types of insights, that's just kind of like in general, yeah. those insights can come in, in in all of those different topics. So in our organization, we actually, we do have specific um, kind of questions or, or topics that we're trying to understand more about. And in our organization, we, we love our acronyms. And so we call them heightened awareness topics or HATS. <laughs> So the heightened awareness topics are kind of like, hey, we are trying to develop our strategy or develop our plan, or we need to understand more about this piece to, you know, develop training or whatever it may be. So we will, um, we will put out specific heightened awareness topics for the team to listen for. And, and that's the way that we say like, Hey, this is what we want to hear. They're also able to put in other things um, in any one of those buckets that I mentioned earlier, but those are the things that we're really looking to understand more because we're trying to shape some sort of strategy or plan. Okay. So your hats are my bucket. Uh, Carol, yes. <laughs> um, in, in, so uh, Jennifer talked about the difference between an insight and, and an observation being the why. How, how does your organization understand the difference between an insight and something that's only an observation? Right. And I, I think that that is key, right? Because I have found over the last couple of years when we're trying to collect insights that that is something that, at least at Gilead and across our medical science team, that they really struggle to understand what that is. And I liked how Jennifer said it, you know, an, in, an observation is something that's fairly immediately seen, right? It's very evident. It's when the clinician says, oh, I found that data to be very impactful on my clinical practice. That's the observation. But it takes the skill of the medical scientist to ask the right questions to get underneath that and to figure out what the insight is. Why did that matter? Why is it shaping their clinical practice? And a lot of times an insight can be a surprise. And it's I look at it as when you're uncovering this and somebody says it and you're like, oh, yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, I really knew that, but I never really thought about it, right? And so then you bring that back to the organization. You've got the insight. The insight can shape the strategy. And then we use that strategy to make plans of of where we can have impact. And ultimately, the impact that we want to make is on an unmet need, an unmet clinician or the patient or the organization. Okay, interesting. Well, yes. And so, so Abby, is it that there is a required human component to, to, to identify an insight or are there other sort of hints or triggers or, or things we can see that could identify something truly as an insight? Yeah, that's really interesting. I love that the idea of the what being observation, the why being kind of the insights. But then there's the so what that comes after that, right? So, so what do we do with that? And I feel like what Carol's saying and what we hear from other customers is, is that's where the strategy comes in. That's where you need, you need that human element to, to process all of that. There's just more and more data out there, right? There's all these small interactions, social media engagements, all of these, it's, it's just never ending. And so you need even smarter systems. I'm, I'm not surprised, Jennifer, you mentioned digital tools like Viva. You have to have those tools to process all this data. But then you still need that human to say, so what? And so I think that's, I'm really interested in, especially you, both of you as leaders of those teams, what do you do with all that information coming back? And how does it, you know, how do you process it? 
definitely. Oh, interesting. So, okay. So we've got, we've got the what, we've got the why, and we've got the so what. Is it that the what is the observation, the why is the insight, and the strategy is the so what that comes from it? That is my hypothesis. I would love That's to hear what the experts think. Carol and Jennifer, what, how, how would you conceptualize? What are we talking about here? Is it the workflow of insights or, or, or it's still identifying what truly is an insight and what to do with it, right? Is this so. what, why, so what a, a, a framework that could be used to, for, for, for insights? What do you think, Carol? I think I think that's a simple way of doing it because I think insight, strategy, impact, and I think I like the uh, the what, the so what, and the you know, and the why and the so what there. I think that's it's a great way to to look at it. Maybe a simpler maybe a simpler way that people can understand. Okay, insight, strategy, impact. That's another that's another nice way to to look at it as well. Well, okay, so let's change directions a little bit. Um, you know, Abby, you mentioned social media. And I, I see that as a, a keyword for, oh my gosh, there's so much data in the world. What, how, what do we do with it? So we have all of these insights coming in. You know, we're trying to ask the why about them. And, and Carol, you mentioned having to sift through these insights for hours and hours coming in. You know, how do we deal with the sheer volume of incoming insights data. And, and maybe we could even talk about that now and what, an, what a utopian future might look like. Well, I would say, I think Jennifer described it the best. You, you can't possibly sift through and find that every piece of information that you're collecting is important to the organization. Mm -hmm. But you have to a way to narrow your focus. And I think that comes from, I believe we talked earlier um, before this call and Jennifer was talking about, you know, just because one person said this doesn't mean it's an insight and they have to formulate, you know, let's, let's look at this in a broader perspective. And are we starting to hear this from across the country or around the globe? And I do think you have to have a leadership team that, or a strategy team that goes, we have to define these buckets Let's see what data we collect. Are there insights in there that impact our strategy that we can then, you know, make changes in what we're doing? If not, let's shift to something new. And on the team that I'm in, COVID-19, I can tell you that this is a, an area that changes in the very beginning, almost on a daily basis. Uh, and right now it's changing you know, just as rapidly, probably at least weekly, and now we have this new surge. So it really requires us to be focused and otherwise we can get lost in the information. Get lost in the, in the information. So Jennifer, how would you counsel MSLs to filter the information that they're bringing back to the organization? Yeah, so that's a great question because there is this delicate balance of, you know, telling the MLs, oh, we only want you to put in if it's like novel and, and exciting and actionable insights. Um, but then we may miss stuff that actually we care about. And, mm -hmm. and I think it really depends where the organization is or where different parts of the organization is on what truly would be an insight. Because, you know, something in a new developing therapeutic area, an insight on what an organization is doing as far as their treatment pathway is very important. And we can utilize that, you know, if we're developing this pathway in this disease state, we want to know who's, who's already, who's out, who's a front runner in that. So we can collaborate with them. Whereas like if you have a developed disease state, well, there's all these pathways. We're not really, that's not really what we're working on. So it doesn't, all these different health systems doing different things isn't as important. So I hate to, I hate to tell MLs like, oh, we only want you to put it in if it's actionable or novel. I just say, if you think that this is an insight, I want you to put it in. Um, I also want them to, like we talked about earlier, is ask those probing questions. If they hear something, what did you mean by this? Or tell me more about this. How did you come to this conclusion? Are you saying that and kind of repeat back what, 
what this like observation is to understand more about it or please explain or share more. And those are ways that we've coached the ML to get the why behind this observation that they're getting. So again, I hate to put, um, <laughs> put coaching and, and telling the MLs only to do certain things. I, I again like to say, whatever you think is an insight, put it in. And then based on where we are in the organization, um, we can decide what is an insight to us versus not. Again, using those heightened awareness topics, we definitely do those. And, and we actually utilize XFly, which is kind of a, um, an analytics tool, if you will, uh, to if we need, like if we're looking at insights on you know, A1C, we can do word searches and pull all the insights on A1C or that have that word in them in, you know, in the insight. So we can read all the insights that are related to A1C. So I think that that's also important to have is to have some way of analyzing the insights or making it easier to read through. Um, I'll tell you that ours isn't perfect. Uh, it's better than, you know, reading through Word documents at this point, but it's still kind of a, a work in progress. And, you know, this just goes back to in natural language processing is not, that does not re replace the human ability to analyze insights and read through them and come to a, um, some sort of summary or analysis or conclusion based on what they read, because it takes a brain to do that rather than a computer at this point. Yeah. Well, so Abby, do you think, following up on that, do you think that natural language processing can at least sort of narrow the playing field or, or give humans uh, less to sort through or, or get us closer? Or what, what is the role of technology in sorting through these insights? I love that question because it really is, um, it's a part of your toolkit, right? So technology is just one of the tools. What Jennifer was talking about as far as coaching and prepping and teaching uh, MSLs and field medical to, to do that active listening and to go for those insights, that's a huge part of it. Um, I think you're totally right in, in trusting them as the keeper of that relationship. That's, that's the magic of medical affairs is that trust in that relationship. So I think encouraging them to share what they think is an insight is, is just brilliant. In the same way, you can use technology to take care of everything else. So whoever they're not in the meeting with, what are they saying? You know, the social media has exploded. We, we keep coming back to that because that's where we're seeing these trends. And we use uh, natural language processing to kind of scrape Twitter for those, for those uh, bubbling oncology conversations. And how can we see who's talking about that and then put them at the top of your list so that someone with that expertise can go and say, oh, that's what the insight is from that. So I think uh, AI is kind of a buzzword. Every, everyone is saying that they're using artificial intelligence, but really at the heart of that is using technology, natural language processing to bubble up what might be important. And then still, I think letting, um, letting a human make that, make that call, but maybe it will get smarter. Maybe we'll have a little, uh, a computer bot that can say, I think this is important, but right now it's still, uh, it's still just bringing it to the surface for you to, to engage with. Well, and what you're talking about is a whole new source of insights. You know, uh, up to now in this conversation, we've been focusing on HCPs or, mm -hmm. or, or other people that the KOL, or I'm sorry, that the MSLs engage with directly as your single source of insights. Um, you, you know, Carol and Jennifer, are there emerging sources of insights beyond the HCP or other KOL? Absolutely. Absolutely. For me, first and foremost, the, um, the person who can provide us with the best and most valuable insight is the patient. Oh. And at, in COVID-19, we have our patient engagement team, and they have actually, uh, for the first time, got a patient council. And we run by them, you know, here's what we're hearing from our medical scientists, from their clinicians. Does that match with your need? And we've actually learned so much from engaging with these patients. The other organizations that we've engaged with would be um, community health centers, where you've got you know, social workers and caseworkers and people who are just answering the phone that we uncovered really needed information in plain language that was health literate to be able to communicate with patients. And so we really, I think, ultimately, 
the primary person who gives us the most, best insights would be the patient. And we're starting to try to hear their voice much more clearly at Gilead. Oh, that's interesting. So it's it's almost like you have the peer-to-peer -peer relationship of the MSL and the healthcare provider. It, are, are you are you trying to set up similar sort of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, patient focused teams, or or who who are the new MSLs that are patient focused? <laughs> Not really an MSL team. It's just yeah. we have with patient engagement team, and their job is to engage with patients and figure out ways that we as a company are able, can collaborate with them. And they're the ones who are really getting this information and driving this. But then I work with the patient engagement team and go, hey, this is what we're hearing in the field, and this is a resource that we think we need. Could you ask your patient counsel their impressions of this? So it's been a great um way to get feedback from the person who ultimately really does matter at the end of the day. That's, that's really interesting. And, and so that's one very interesting source of emerging source of insights is the patients themselves. I guess social media, you probably would see that as well. Um, Jennifer, are you seeing new sources of insights? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think with the explosion of the digital world and artificial intelligence and social media and all that, we we're actually kind of uh, kind of just now diving into this and kind of it, it's old news for certain parts of our organization. We're trying to kind of streamline our approach to looking at them, if you will. So we've developed um, a Twitter dashboard for one of our disease states. And that's, that's been super helpful in, in looking at like spikes of, of insights coming in, um, as well as actually leading us to some like TikTok providers that have hundreds of thousands of, of like, you know, followers and they're giving full on presentations on this. So it really has opened a can of worms for our organization saying like we need to we need to figure out how to look at this. So we're we're looking at it in other disease states as well, getting this TikTok and then being like how do we find these other KOLs that are like that are giving us all these insights. So it's, it's insights that we never had before. So we're just kind of opening Pandora's box, if you will, on the whole social media insights and where we can, where we can start gathering all those. So more to come on that. Well, so it sounds like we have certainly opened Pandora's <laughs> box of data. Um, Carol, what do you see as the next steps or what's on the horizon for insights now? For, for our organizations. Oh, wow, what's on the horizon? Or, or even what needs to be solved first in this massive explosion of new things that need to be solved. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, well, there's so much information. I think, you know, the biggest issue is how do you narrow the focus and narrow it down and make the amount of data that you're getting manageable. And I, I will have to give a plug to Larval here. I, for one, am not a um, social media person. Like I might get on uh, LinkedIn once every six weeks. So I don't really track people that way. And so Larval does a tremendous job of following OLs for you with their Twitters and their Facebook and conferences that they're attending. And this gives our medical scientist team another tool to be able to hear what's going on. And they also do a, a, a tracker on COVID-19 where they go through and they find conferences and CME programs or in meetings. And the MS is able to have that as another opportunity to, to put their ear to the ground and listen. So I, I think it is the explosion of data. How do you navigate all of that and how do you know what really is important and makes sense and of course I think finally you have to be fluid and be willing to say okay this is the direction we were headed yesterday but it's not working anymore. Yeah it's Jennifer same question to you uh, there are so many challenges what do you what do you think needs to be solved first? So I I think um where we need, at least in our organization, 
um, some way of compiling all the insights in, in one place. I think that's like one challenge that we have. So if we think of like Twitter and TikTok and Facebook and the HCPs and the ad boards that we're having, um, plus, you know, what the medical liaisons are coming in. So all the insights that we're gathering just in field medical affairs and oh, actually I'll, I'll expand that to medical affairs because they do, you know, some of our ad boards and everything. So we'll just say like all of medical affairs, what are the insights that are coming in and getting all of those in one place? I think that's like, <laughs> that's challenge number one. Challenge number two is then we have this whole organization. So we have the medical side of our organization. We have market access. We have public affairs. We have commercial. They're all gathering insights in different regards. And so getting all of that into one place is, is like the next challenge. So if anybody has a solution to that, I'll take it. But yeah, you know, that's, that's one thing that we are we're kind of like working through right now is like, we have all this stuff coming in. How do we filter it? It filter it in a way that's digestible and then present it in a way that the person cares about the information and then get it to the right person in the organization. So. All right. Well, dealing with Pandora's box of data (laughs) exploit, let's leave it there for today. Uh, Carol, Jennifer, and Abby, thanks for joining us. MAPS members, you can continue the conversation at MAPS Connect, and don't forget to subscribe. And we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Medical Affairs Professional Society podcast series, Elevate.